uh, record to the cloud. Okay, so now we are officially recording. So today we're talking about the web analyzer, which is now called the Vibrata, but I'm just used to the name web analyzer. So I want to talk about the web an analyzer a little bit so that you'll know what um, it entails and understand how it works. So what we're going to do is talk about how it works. There are two particular strategies that I trade on the web analyzer. Um, our team as a whole has been trading and learning the ECC 11 strategy. There's also one called BYOB Cash Out, which I believe stands for Be Your Own Bank. Um, I'm not talking about that one tonight, but I do have a training video on my YouTube channel if you want to go and watch that one. Um, each week, I will be looking at doing a new training on one of the products. So it'll be either ECC 11, BYOB Cash Out, and I, now I'm about to roll back in the Harmonic Scanner. The Harmonic Scanner is one of our flagship products within the company that's totally amazing. And so um, I will be rolling that in as well. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in here really, really quick. Let me start here. So, so just talking about and making sure you understand what the analyzer is or the web analyzer. So at its core, it's basically a software that finds volume burst um, using an algorithm and it alerts you of high probability entry points. So just a few seconds ago when we were on here, you heard a cha-ching sound. That was the web analyzer. So when you hear that cha-ching, we think money. So now we're immediately looking at our charts to figure out if we are gonna take the trade that it is suggesting or whatever. So basically with the web analyzer, it is designed to work together with one of the many custom strategies, which are used to determine how you're gonna proceed with that setup. So just how I just mentioned ECC 11 and how I just mentioned um, BYOB, those are two custom strategies. So what happens is you and I can both hear the cha-ching at the same time. But let's just say I have ECC 11 up and you have BYOB cash out up. We're both going to be looking at those strategies independently of each other to determine what we're going to do with that trade. So based off of my analysis with ECC 11, I may go ahead and execute the trade. Based off of your analysis with BYOB cash out, you may wait. So the analyzer is just giving you a probability entry and then you use the particular strategy that works with you to determine if you're going to enter or exit the trade. So this allows tailoring of each trade to your personal a psychology or analysis. But the outcome by using the analyzer alerts is a higher probability of winning. So the strategy in conjunction with the web analyzer increases the probability of winning that particular trade. So two popular team trading strategies, as I mentioned, are ECC 11 and BYOB cash out. But today I wanna to focus on the ECC 11 strategy. If you're on your phone or your computer or got your cell phone, take a screenshot of this. These are the settings that you need to make sure that you have set up. If, you ha if you've gone through the Help and Families team site, you've seen this information as well. So as soon as I go over this chart, I'm gonna actually pull up the analyzer to make sure that you guys understand how to navigate um, through the web analyzer to make sure all of your settings are actually set up. Okay, so let's talk about the web analyzer checklist. Okay, so what you can pretty much use any of the time frames, but I recommend using the 15 minute time frame um, for the web analyzer. So you want to make sure that you're on the correct time frame, and I'm going to go over that. Okay, so you check your time frame. I use the 15 minute time frame to get my alerts, but I also use the five minute and the one minute to help me execute the trade. And so I am going to show you how all of this works together. So write this down. Trade 15 minute time frame. Use five minute or you can put M5 because that's what you're going to see in your chart. Use M5 and M1 to confirm entry. Okay. So that's what you're looking at there. Okay. Now. One of the things that you're paying attention to, you're checking to see if the red line has crossed above the blue line or if it's crossed below the blue line, okay? So if the red line crosses above the blue line, you're looking to buy. So write that down. 
If the red line crosses above the blue line, I'm looking to buy. If the red line crosses below the blue line, to sell, okay? Now, what I recommend personally is looking for that cross to happen on all three time frames: your five minute, your one minute, and your um, your one minute, your five minute, and your 15. So whether it crossed above or below, you want to have it confirmed on all three time frames. So make sure you write this down. And trust me, this may seem like a lot, but when I show you, we're going to go through maybe like five or six, okay? Because I want to make sure that you can kind of see and recognize. So even tonight when we finish this call, get on here and practice what we're looking at, okay? Now, it does not matter where the candles are in conjunction to the cloud. I'm gonna show you the cloud. So I'm gonna go over this again with, the, with this pulled up. So I'm making me a few notes to make sure I don't forget when I pull the chart up. Okay, so it doesn't matter where the candles are in conjunction to the cloud, okay? But positioning can give you a stronger move and I'll explain that. So the positioning can give you a stronger move. Okay. Now, if everything on your chart is mixed together, that is consolidation. Do not take the trade. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. Write that down. If everything is mixed together, do not take the trade. You wanna be able to see clear moves on there. Now, these are your settings for your ECC 11 strategy. Once you log into your web analyzer, you're gonna pick Dr. Kathy's strategy, and then you're gonna make sure you have these settings. So I'm gonna jump over to the web analyzer so we can start playing around with this to, um, so I can show you how it works, okay? So if you look here at the top up here, you see these different time frames: M5, M15, H1, H4D. So that stands for a five minute, 15 minute, one hour, four hour, and day. Remember, trade in the 15 minutes. So what you'll do is uncheck every box except for M15, because those are the only ones that we want to receive alerts for. Now, if you choose and you want to receive an alert for bigger time frames, you can definitely feel free to do so. Just know you may be dealing with that trade a lot longer. So now, once you um, come here, your chart may not look like this because your strategy is not selected. So down here at the bottom where it says strategy, you will click here. And once you click here, here's the drop down. It'll say select strategy template. Dr. Kathy is the first one. So once you select that, hit save settings, it will repopulate your, um, your chart. And once it repopulates, then you go ahead and uncheck those boxes except for M15. If I'm going too fast or you need me to repeat something, let me know. Just put it in the chat, okay? Um, so now that you have done that, the next thing you wanna do, we have to go get those settings together. So where it says Ichimoku, that is the name of the actual cloud. You want to hover over and hit this second icon for settings, okay? So now, as you can see, it pops up those previous settings that we had here, okay? So as you can see, I need it to be red, blue, green, green, red. So I'm gonna change this to red, blue, and then you got your green, green, red. Now you can make these lines as dark as you want or feel like you need to, you know, to make them stand out because remember this red and blue line are important in your trading, okay? So now that you've done that, you're there. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have closed that out yet. So after you've done that, you hit on inputs and these numbers have to be changed, okay? So this is gonna be, if you look here at the settings, six, 13, 26, and 13, okay? So analyzer, we are going to six, 13, 26, 13. Now, I recommend before you close, just hit save as default and hit okay. And generally when you hit save as default, unless you clear your cookies on your computer or anything, 
every time you log in, your settings will automatically be there and you do not have to redo your settings, okay? So now that you're fully set up, we're going to talk through this checklist, okay? Now, a couple of things to note. The pair at the top is the most recent pair. Also, let me open this up. It is called currency. So there is a currency strength meter. I'm about to post this link in the chat. Please go ahead and um, copy this link and save it. Hey, Marnisha, I just saw you say hey to everybody. How you doing, girl? All right, so I just posted that link here. Now, this link is good because it helps you to also see with the main um, currencies, what's strong versus what's weak. All currencies aren't there, but you know, like the top 10, okay? So what we're gonna do, the top pair, now make note of this, when you see green, even before you read anything, if you see green, you know you're looking for a buy. If you see red, you know you're looking for a sell, okay? Now, let me see. Okay. So let's start with Euro JPY because that was the most recent one called 47 minutes ago. I clicked the wrong thing. Here we go. So when you click on it, it will pop up over here in your chart on the 15 minute time frame. So it's green. So we are looking for a buy. Okay. So it's a couple of things that you want to do with this checklist. Now, I did not put these steps on here. These are just some extra things that I do. Um, to help me confirm a trade, but you can kind of figure out what works for you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So the first thing you want to look at is the call time. So it tells us it was called at 2230. Okay. So if you look at the bottom down here, you see 2230 is right here where my cursor is. So the first thing you're going to do, this second menu item right here, you're going to click on it and click vertical line you're going to bring your line over until you get to 2230 draw your vertical line i like yellow because yellow stands out okay and then i'll make it just a little bit darker so it called the trade on this candle okay so this is another thing when you look back even if a trade was called an hour and a half ago or called two hours ago still look at the trade because in some cases the move has not happened yet because when the analyzer calls a trade it's at a um support and resistance zone so the market is inconsistently trying to figure out am i gonna break it or am i gonna you know resist you know so regardless if it's been two three four hours i always look whenever i log into the analyzer I'm going to always look at the top ones, but I'm going to also go down through until I find one that works for me, okay? So now that you've marked your time with your vertical, you then want to look at the call that price, and you want to do a horizontal line. So this was called at 116.252, okay? So you're going to come here and click horizontal line. I just recommend putting a line on the chart because it's, it's easier that way, and then you'll come this menu option pops up. So you're gonna hit settings here and you're gonna type in that call that price, which was 116.252, okay? And then I also make my line a little darker, okay? So here's the deal. Where these two lines crossed is where the trade was called at. They're calling for a buy. As you can see, it has not moved in the position of a buy as of yet. So remember, looking at the checklist, when this trade was called, the red line was over the blue line, okay, which was important. Another thing for me, this purple box here that you see, this is the cloud. So for me, if the price is above the cloud, that's a strong indication of a buy. If the price goes below the cloud, that's an indication of a sell for me. Some people will trade a buy or a sell regardless of position, but if they call for a buy, I'm only going to look to trade that buy if it's above the cloud. So you can make note of that. If that that's just an extra precautionary measure that I take as well. And then another thing that I want you to make note of is this. 
anytime the, the cloud somewhat tells the future, right? So anytime you see the cloud has a flat bottom like this, let me find my little pen so I can show y'all. Let me annotate. Okay. So anytime you see a flat bottom like that, more than likely what's going to happen is that the candle is going to come touch that flat before it continues to head back up. So that's one of the reasons why I say, because when this trade was right here, even though the red was above the blue, some people would have just jumped in this trade and they looking for it to go up, which it probably will, but it start pulling back first. So you're in the negative, right? So that's why I wait and do all of my checklist items because the reality is this, let me clear those drawings. When I mentioned before, looking at the other time frames. So let me show you. So I marked here on the 15. So when I look at the five minute, let's go to the five. Let's go back. Okay, so five minute, when you look here, what do you see? You see the red line below the blue line where it was called. So this was an indicator because this time frame didn't line up with the call that is not time to enter the trade. So that's what you're looking for, okay? So this is actually still a good trade for a potential buy, but it's now a matter of waiting. So remember in my notes when I said, if everything is jumbled together, that's consolidation. This is what I mean. You got your candles, the cloud, the red and the blue all together. Inconsistency is not time to execute the trade. When you look at your one minute, and I'm gonna have to spread it out so we can see the candles better. Okay, so when you look at your one minute, what did you see? Your red below the blue is not lined up right. You need your red above the blue. And for me, I wanna see the candles above the cloud. So if you continue to wait for all the time frames to line up, it puts you in a more solid position of execution. Now, I'm not as concerned about the candles being above the cloud on the one or the five as I am the 15. So some people, you know, play accordingly. So I would test it out in your demo and make sure that you write down when you do a trade, write down what you saw on the one minute, the five minute and the 15 minute that made you want to execute that trade. So that's what you're looking for. So as soon as I get a trade idea, I draw my horizontal line, I draw my vertical line. I look at the five minute, I'm sorry, I look at the 15 minute to see is the red candle, I mean the red line above the blue. In this case it was, but when I went and looked at my five and my one, it was not. So that tells me Camille is not ready yet. So now you just wait for everything to line up on that trade. So you're good there. There's nothing else you do with that trade right now. So you just put that trade down as one that you are watching, okay? Oh, yay, it's making sense, okay. So that's what you do. So now what I would do is go to the next trade. We got Euro AUD out here. So Euro AUD, they're looking at a buy as well. This is a good example. Okay, so what you're gonna do is draw your vertical line. Remember at the call time, it was called at 22.30 as well. Where is it at, right here? No, nope. wrong time, that's 23.30. It was called here. Now make note, anytime your candles and red line and blue line are in the cloud, do not take the trade. Do not take the trade, okay? Um, there's another piece that I wanna add, but I'm gonna wait, because <laughs> I don't wanna give y'all too much at one time. So we'll start there, and then over weeks, I'll start adding a few more pieces. Um, especially after you watch the videos on support and resistance and, you know, things like that. So Euro AUD, they call for a buy. So I drew my vertical line for the time. And now I'm drawing my horizontal line for the amount. And this is uh, the price, which 1.69378. So we're going to enter that. Okay. So this was called here. So this is another good example. So the price was called here. Your red line was above the blue. When you look at your five minute, when it was called, the red line was above the blue. And when you look here, 
this one, the red line and blue line were like making out, <laughs> if you will. So you like even here, they're they're smack dab on top of each other. So this will be a sign for me not to execute this trade. Now this one is a real sticky one, and let me tell you why. When this trade was called, it was within the cloud. So let me tell you this, the cloud, yes, red above the blue above the cloud is a buy. But you want to make sure that it, you confirm it on all time frames, the 15, the 5, and the 1 for the optimum entry. Because the 1 and the 5 kind of tell you what's to come on the 15. So if you see it pulling back on the one or the five, it could be changing directions on the 15 or it can just be a slight pullback, okay? So my, remember this, anytime candles are in the cloud, do not take the trade. Because when this trade was called, it was trying to break out of the cloud. The cloud access support and resistance. So it's like a rubber band. The candles are determined if it's going to pop that rubber band or reverse. And so whenever you see this, do not enter the trade because it looked like if it would have broke the cloud, it would have kept going back up. But what happened was it went above and came back down in the cloud. So that's why you see the down position. Okay. So in any of these instances, if you were to get a trade, don't immediately enter the trade because you see everything lined up. You want to see it break the cloud and actually close. Okay. You want to see it break and actually close. If that makes sense, put a one in the chat. If that makes sense, put a one in the chat. Yay. Yay, yay, y'all. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and look at another trade. So this is a trade you can continue to watch. And this is what I tell you guys, for those who want to watch this trade for a, a potential entry, even in your demo. What um what you want to do is this. So let me draw this, and this will answer your question in a second. Um, Saka Julia, this will answer your question. Um, let me find it. Rectangle. Okay. So when I look at entries, and I'm just gonna go ahead and show y'all this because I am. I look at the previous high. So if this is where the trade was called, I'm looking backwards to the previous high from my entry. And I'm also looking for the previous low. So this right here is the zone for me. Okay. So as you can see, let me get my little pen so I can show you what I mean when I say break. So as you can see, um, before they called this trade, this was my low and this was my high. So the top of this candle and the bottom of this candle, I look at the immediate high and low from, the, from where the trade was called. So this is my zone. So what I'm looking for is for the candle to break either above here. If it breaks above here and actually closes, it's going to continue upwards. But if it comes up here, but it comes out, but then it closes back inside or it comes down here and it's playing in here, indecision. So just like if you look here, let me clear this out so I can keep drawing. This is my zone, but what happened? On this next candle, it, can't, it broke. It broke the zone and it closed. But what happened? It kept going down. Okay, so even though the analyzer gives you a trade idea, it's suggesting a buy. If you take all of these pieces and put them into play, you may be able to get in on a sale and make some money before it goes up into a buy. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna show you this rectangle thing again. That's the part that I was gonna wait. Yeah, breaking out of your zone. That's the part that I was gonna wait on, but I think it could be very beneficial. So I'm just gonna tell y'all. So add this step, you draw your horizontal line, horizontal line, vertical line. After you draw your horizontal and vertical line, identify the previous high and previous low so you can mark your zone, okay? So when you mark your zone, 
you look from this candle, you look backwards until you get to the previous high. That's your high. And then from this candle, you look backwards for the previous low and you're using the bodies. Now, Marquita tends to use the wicks too. So you can kind of figure out which one works for you, whether you want to use wicks or just bodies. I just use bodies. So that's the thing. Everybody kind of figure out what works best for you from a trading perspective, okay? So once you draw your rectangle in the trade, what you do is wait for everything to line up and wait for the candle to break that zone. Okay, so for example, when this broke here, trading in the cloud can be very risky, but it's doable. So trade at your own risk with that. Me personally, I would have took taken the trade. I, I trade within the cloud, but my newbies, I try to get y'all to wait. But in your demo, test out so you can get acclimated to see what works. Okay, so what happened was when this broke and this red crossed below this blue, that was the indicator to get in on the sale to catch your pips, okay? When you look at the five minute, okay, what happened was it broke. Once the red crossed below the blue, it was a sign to get into the trade, okay? So even though it broke right here, I was still waiting for this red to cross the blue. So I would have waited 10 more minutes and then been able to get in for the sale, okay? Same thing with the one minute. Here we go. Okay. It broke here. Okay. So red was below the blue side. So I would have got in. So you would have experienced just a little bit of pullback, but then it came down and headed down in the trade. So tying all them pieces together and just quickly glancing. And as you keep practicing, you'll keep glancing at the time frames and you'll see the move happen. And pretty much you're going for your 10 pips and getting out of the trade. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions on this? I'm gonna pull up um, another pair here in a second. I'm gonna look at this sale for USDCHF. Does anybody have any questions? So the time is counting forward to the right. So the time on the right hand side is letting you know how much time is left on that candle. So we are on a 15 minute time frame. So this time right here is counting down 15 minutes before the next candle forms. Okay. So that's what that is. And then um, a lot of times we wait to see um, Jay, you wouldn't necessarily get in on a on the candlestick just because you see green, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but yeah, so if you're on a uh, whatever time frame you're on, it's gonna count down for that time frame. Um, and I normally, when I'm looking to enter a trade, I'm going to wait to see the next candle that forms to let me know if I should execute that trade or not. Um, Jackie, to answer your question, and then Jay, I'm about to answer your question. Um, to answer your question, the vertical line is your time. So you look here at the UTC time because the time down here at the bottom is in UTC time. So whatever you see right here is the 2230. That's where you're going to put your vertical line at 2230. Okay. Um, so Jay, just because you see a green candle doesn't mean buy. So even look right here, for example, Okay, uh, so okay, let's look here. So as you can see here, this is technically a downtrend, but you going down, but let's just say you jumped in on the buy right here because you saw a blue candle, I mean a green candle, but because the overall trend is down, you're gonna put yourself in the negative because you're trading against the trend. So with this, you're looking for the overall trend to know when to execute because in the trading market, you have your trends, so you're going to experience pullbacks. Um, let me see if I can show you a better example. Let's see here. Let me go to a bigger time frame. Let me look at the hour. Okay. So for example, Hold on, I'm trying to see a good one because them, them 
other them different color candles be getting you. So let's just say if you look here, let me get my little pen thingy. So if you look here, you got your downtrend, right? This candle is green. It was greener, but by the time the market closed, price is pushing down. So if you would have got in a buy right here, the next candle went down. So now you in the negative, the trend is still down. So you don't trade by the candle, you look at the overall trend of, of it. So that's why you wanna confirm on um, multiple time frames what you're seeing to know when to actually execute. Now, I'm not saying that that candle won't cause a turn of everything, but I wouldn't just look at that candle alone. Um, I would also look at the smaller time frames to confirm. Sorry, hold on a second. Let me blow this up. So for example, you asked about that green one. As you can see, it was bigger, but now it's pulling back down. So you would be in the negative right now with this trade. So the next candle forms in seven minutes. So we'll come back and see what that candle does. But when I look at my five minute, it was green for that five minutes. A new five minutes has started with two minutes left. Now you see a red candle. So does that make sense? It's, it's trying to get bigger on the red, on the lower end to go down so you won't just don't ever just enter because you see green or you see red now that's a true scalp trader if you trade on a one minute time frame you could try that in your demo <laughs> and see how that works but you want to look at the overall picture of the trend to determine what position you should be looking to get into so remembering what i said um, about identifying the zone so for me what i would be looking for before i buy is for it to come back and test and break above this this zone right here Okay, so I hope that helps. Okay, let me make sure nobody else had any other questions on that. Okay, good job. Let me see. Okay, I think everybody's good. Okay, cool. So now, oh, I just had one pop up. Pastor Chris, what are you talking about? Red above the blue, above the cloud is a buy. Blue, blue above the, mm -mm. Well, that's right, but the way you're saying it will confuse yourself. Just say if the red is above the blue, you're looking to buy. If it, the red is below the blue, you're looking to sell. If the candles are above the cloud, it's a stronger, it's a stronger buy. You can still buy below the cloud, but it's stronger if the candles are above the cloud because it's like the cloud is pushing it up. Um, if the candles are below the cloud, it's like it's pushing it down, so it's a stronger sell. However, we know that the, the candles move on both sides of the cloud um, um, on the different sides of the cloud, but I just know when it's above, it, it gives me a stronger push, okay? Someone asked the question, how do you um, determine your previous high and low? Okay, so for me in determining a previous high and low, if I'm trading on the 15 minute chart, what I do, and let me try to zoom in so you can see this. So I'm gonna take this zone off so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so this, where this horizontal and vertical line, where vertical line and horizontal line cross. So right here, let me get my little pen thingy. So right here, this candle is where the trade was called. So based off where the trade was called, I look backwards to the previous high. So this candle right here is the previous high since this candle. These other two candles were, I look at the body. So these other two candles were at the same high as mine, as this, this candle. So I look backwards to the previous high, and then I look backwards from this candle, where's the previous low since my candle's low, which is here. So that's how I identify the high and the low. And then I'll just, you know, draw a rectangle from the high to the low. And just stretch it out for a little bit because you know it could be some consolidation for a while so in some cases so then i draw that and then that's what i'm looking at 
for it to break this high and close. So just like how this broke the low and closed, then I'm now looking for a sale. Okay. Perfect. Um, yeah, Jackie. Yeah, where the trade was called. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right. Anybody else have any questions on that before we go to another example? What's your question, Jay? You can type it or you can unmute, up to you. So, hey, I'm from you. Hey. Uh, my question is, even though this is a buy, because it's going down, you can, you can use it as a sale. I guess that's where I was getting confused at since this was a, the call was a buy. Yes. But it's so, going down, so you decided to sell it. because it was going Right. Down. So basically, the algorithm is not 100% perfect, but it's giving you a high probability entry. And based off of the previous time, it is suggesting a buy. But then by you applying your strategy, the strategy is helping you confirm if it's a buy or not. Okay. So it, it may be a buy, but not yet. But like in this case, we saw a sale happen first. So if you're looking and you're like, all my stuff is lined up and it broke that zone, I'm going to jump in for a sale for my 10 pips. But now that I got my 10, I'm going to watch this trade for it to line up to what they originally called and get my 10 pips on the buy later. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, we're gonna keep going. I'm trying to get y'all a trade or two, but most of the time on Sundays this early when the market's just opening, it's um, really slow, trying to get its momentum up. So that's kind of what we're, you know, facing and dealing with. But are these examples helping you? If they're helping you, please put a two in the chat. If not, put a three so I know how to tighten up my job. Yes, I like twos. I like twos. <laughs> okay, perfect. So let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. So we've done Euro AUD. Okay, let's look at USD CHF. Let's see, USD, CHF, they are suggesting a sale, okay? And yes, the replay will be available for you to rewatch. Um, Y'all just pray I get it out fast enough. Okay, so they're calling for, uh, they were calling for a sale on USD, CHF. This was actually called almost two hours ago, so the move may have already happened, but I still want to analyze and look at it so you can see how everything moved, okay? So this one was called at 21.47. So let's just say roughly 21.45 because everything is on a 15 minute increment. Okay, so let's just say it was called here. Hmm, okay. This one was called at 9.7267. So this one hasn't even moved like it's supposed to. I can just tell by looking at it. Nine seven two six seven. Did I get that right? Nine seven. Where am I? Oh yeah, nine seven two six seven. Okay. So here's a good example. They're calling for a sale. Okay. So this is where the sale was called at. So for me, once again you are looking for your previous high. So this is the candle it was called at. So you look backwards for your previous high, which happens to be up here, and your previous low, which happens to be here, okay? So if you look, because this candle was so small, everything was just lined up. That's the previous high and the low. So in this particular case, somebody probably would have traded in this zone but it's playing at the top of the zone, okay? Now, remember for me, I'm only gonna look for a sale on this trade unless it breaks above. And remember what I said before, whenever, let me show y'all this, because the cloud foretells the future. Whenever you see a flat line like this on the cloud, this acts as a magnet. 
In a lot of cases, price don't bump this, keep going back down. Okay. So trade didn't even do nothing that was supposed to be done. Now let me reference this for you guys. Um I showed y'all the currency strength meter. Okay. So when you look at this, because we're currently looking at USDCHF, it's telling me that the US dollar is stronger than the Swiss franc. By the US dollar being stronger than the Swiss franc, that's a sign of a buy. Okay. So what happens and how you can tell that is when you look at a currency pair, the first pair, the first currency in the pair, its strength or weakness is what drives the trade. So USD was stronger than CHF, so that means you're looking at buys. USD, if it's weaker than CHF, you're looking at sales. So in this case, we're still looking for that. So I will say this, it's trying to break above this zone up to this cloud. Remember I said the cloud acts as a magnet and will go down. You're not going to get 10 pips. So I'm not going to, I wouldn't touch this trade. I will let, let us see what it's going to do. Is it going to hit here and come back down? If it hits here and bounces back down and breaks, I'll be looking for a sale. The only way I would get into a buy is if this breaks the cloud above here and closes. Okay. So those are just kind of things to look at. So all these are act as areas of support and resistance. Y'all should have watched that video on um, I Am Center if you have not yet. Um, I encourage you to go look at the video on support and resistance, okay? So that's what's actually happening here. So this trade is not yet ready for execution on any level. It's still within the zone trying to figure out what it's gonna do. Okay, um, let's keep going. Please post your questions if you have them. Um, we're going to stay on probably another 12 minutes. The market is still warming up, so it's not a lot out there. Also, um, the web and there's a web analyzer trader thing happening this week. Um, every day, you know, the team we're doing our own on Tuesday that we hope you guys plug into. Um, it's in the Telegram group, so it'll be trading around the clock every day this week with the educators. Plug into that, even if you're in demo, to test out entering and exiting trades and so forth. And if you run into issues or have questions on trades and stuff, definitely let us know. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, so let's look at NZD JPY. So NZD is the New Zealand dollar. And let me pull this up too. I didn't go over this with y'all. But bear with me. Um, write down FX Street and 4X Factory. Um, these are two news sites that allow you to see um, what's happening in the markets. So I never really watched the news before I started trading. Um, but it'll, so NZD is a bank holiday, which means they're closed for whatever banking reason. So you really wouldn't look to trade that because it's going to be little to no movement. But it's really cool to pay attention to what... Um, news is coming out it tells you what pair is affecting um if you see a red uh folder that means it's high impact which means when this news come out it's really gonna have the market moving versus if you see yellow in most cases is low impact very minimal movement to affect the market so me personally um if it's a red folder coming out i try to be out of the market because you could be in a strong uptrend in a good trade and some high impact news come and just make the market drop. So if you're gonna stay in the trade, you wanna put your parameters in place like stop losses and take profits and stuff like that. And then you have your um, orange folders, which is medium impact. So it can have an effect or it, it may not, it just depends. Um, and I use both of them because um, sometimes one may have something that the other doesn't. So I always check both. Before I trade every single day, I always check the economic calendar so I can see what's coming up. Um, so, um, da -da -da. so yeah, so just something to take reference to. So, for example, how they were saying this is a bank holiday right now for NZD. 
that's the trade we about to pull up now in ZDJPY. Um, let's see. Appreciate that, Pastor Chris. All right, so we'll go ahead and look at it anyway, um, because even though it's a holiday or news doesn't mean you can't trade it, just sometimes it's not gonna be a lot of movement or activity happening with that particular pair. If this was a buy, it's probably just now setting up. So this is an example. Okay, so NCDJPY, it was called at 2146, so we'll just say 2145. It was called here. Green means it was called for a buy. And the price that it was called at was 64,634. So we'll put that down. Okay. So it was called here. So when it was called here, your red was above the blue. Now here's another thing to pay attention to. Do not trade whenever the candles are in between the red and blue line. You want separation. So you want the red line to be above the blue, but you really want your candles to be on top if it's a buy. So just like how you see here, you got your candles, your red, your blue. That's what you're looking for. You don't want to see red candles blue. You want to see candles red blue, just like you see here, candles red blue. So this is actually a good example. This would have been a great trade to get some profits off of. So let me show you. So now that we've drawn that, you now come draw your zone. So this is the trade. So you look at the previous high, which was here. And the previous low looks like it was here. Let me see. And sometimes I see why Kita uses her, um, that's sometimes I see why she uses, what am I trying to say? It's right here. Sometimes I see why she uses her zone, um, uses the weeks. But anyway, so in this case, you draw your zone. So what happened was it came outside the zone here Remember, you're waiting, you wouldn't enter this trade yet because the red line when this came out is not below the blue line. So this is not a trade that you would enter yet because the red line isn't below the blue. So what happens on the next candle, it comes back up into that zone. So good thing you didn't enter it just because it broke. Check your checklist, okay? So it came back in, but look what happened. It broke and closed. When this broke and closed here, let me mark it because I need to go look at the other time frames. So when it broke and closed here, change the color. It broke and closed here and the red was above the blue. That would have been my sign to get into the trade, okay? When I would confirm it on the five, and on the five, what do you see? You see your red above the blue, and it, as soon as this one pulled up and closed, that would have been my sign to enter the trade. And then when you look at your one minute, let me find the line. On your one minute, as soon as it broke above here and the red was above the blue, I would have executed the trade. Does that make sense? If it makes sense, put a four in the chat. If it makes sense, put a four in the chat. Makes sense, put a four in the chat. Yay. Praise the Lord. Okay. So now it's just a matter of practice and implementation of what you're learning. Um, so what my homework will be for you guys is after we get off, I want you to play on the analyzer. I want you to do at least three to four of these analysis on your own and send it to one of us, me or Marquita in Telegram or a Jackie or who else has been here a while, a Davina, uh, you know, just so we can look and see or actually do one or two and post it in our Telegram, like, and take a screenshot and this is what I analyze. So everybody can see and we can work together. That's your homework. Everybody pick one. Some of y'all may pick the same one. It's okay. But like literally mark your, um, where the price was called, um, where the price was called, what time it was called, identify your high and low, draw your zone, and then tell us based off of your analysis, would that one be a buy set up for a buy or would have gone a different way? So 
this is the way that it's going to help you get sharper. So I'll be looking for y'all to post those in the Telegram group so we can start working together. Okay, so what you want to do is pick one. Um, remember, use your five minute, five, I mean, your 15 minute, your five minute and your one minute. You want to uh, do your vertical line to determine the time it was called, your horizontal line to determine the price it was called at. After you do that, you identify your zone by looking to the left to see what the previous high and the previous low is. Um, okay, yep. Um, previous high and previous low. And then see, did the market set itself up to go into that direction it called or did it pull back where you could have gotten on a sale instead or vice versa? So just to refresh on how you draw on the chart. So let me clear my chart. One second. Come on, baby. Okay. All right. So. So this little menu right here on the left, the second menu option here is where you get your vertical and horizontal lines from. Vertical line, horizontal lines. The fourth icon down is where you get your rectangle. So once you click on your rectangle, you identify the previous high and drag to the previous low and then just drag to the left so you can get it to span out. Okay, so that's how you draw on there. And whenever you click on any of the objects, it's on menu shows up. So you can, you know, change the colors or, you know, whatever you got popping to make it look however you need it to look. Okay, let me see. I think I saw another question pop up. Okay, cool. All right, so does anybody have any questions for me before we wrap tonight's training call? No questions? Let me see. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, I will be on the lookout and I'm gonna let Marquita know because I don't even know if she made it on here or not. Um, uh, strongest pairs to trade um gold us 30 but they're both very volatile but definitely practice those in your demo um and then also gbp jpy moves really good and um makes a lot of money yay sacajulia and charlotte i'm glad it helped um gbp jpy is really good um let me see what else uh those are the only ones i really look at and focus but the cool thing is because all of the trade all of them are out here test them all out because you may find one that you like that i don't like um i have a lady well tamra young lawrence young's wife um she loves usd jpy i know she made six figures just trading that one pair so that's the beautiful thing about this space is so many pairs you don't have to trade everything You'll find find one that you know is good for you that you really like, and just stick with that. Learn the nature of it and stuff. That's sort of like what Kita has done with gold, and what I did, you know, have started doing with US starting. So um, I'm glad that this helped you guys. And let me see, is John John? You trying to say something? John McDougal. You trying to say something? Where he at? No, he's not trying to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, oh, we won't have market structure on Tuesday night because we'll be doing the uh, training. But definitely make sure um, that you jump on market structure with Freddie. I'm about to pull her husband, John, in. He thought I was playing with him. But he's, he's a beast with it, just like uh, his wife. And so you definitely want to get on market structure. Like, if you want to become... No, it's no app for it, unfortunately, Jay, but you can pull it up on your phone if you just go to um, the website and you should still pretty much be able to see it right. But yeah, so um, definitely make sure that you try to plug into um, the trainings when they do that. So that's all that I have. Thank y'all for jumping on. Those who are jumping on the leadership call at um, 930, I will see you guys there and um, happy trading. I'm going to be looking for those uh, 
examples in the telegram. I want to see if you're doing your homework because we want to make sure that you get this and that you got it. And our thing is you learning and implementing. So I will talk to you guys later. See ya.